Yes. I work with Hollywood's top 14. It's 14 individuals that have been in the city of Hollywood, most of them decades. And they're high utilizers of emergency systems and hospitals. These are individuals that every social service agency in the city of Hollywood has tried to outreach and place in housing for the last 10, 15 years. They call it service resistance. What we're doing early in the morning is we're focusing particularly on people that are too sick to access services on their own, but not really sick enough to be compelled to treatment and to actually talk to them in an environment that's less overwhelming than the middle of the day. Phone messages. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm just. Why does your face look puffed up? Is it puffed up? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ever thought about going back to the hospital? Well, I would if, if I need to. Uh, I, I'm not opposed to. You know? you know, before when he wanted to go to the hospital, he had really bad MRSA infection. MRSA seems to be a really common problem for a lot of people living outside right now. One of our top 14 guys is Al, right here. That was kind of rough, you know, you work with a person for a year or two. And you slowly watch them die on the streets. Build a relationship with them and you just watch them pass them on the streets and it hurts. There's a lot of outreach teams out here that uh, give out sandwiches, give out clothing. So I'm trying to get you off the streets. I don't let somebody else give them a sandwich. Terrence, what's up? Yeah. You can't be out here forever, Terrence. That's for sure. We know that. And I know you don't like it out here. That is deep. But what you can get, you don't have to die. It's been five years. Are you cool? Ready? One, two, three. Yeah, we were a He was housed. He was housed. We was case managing him in the housing. He lost his housing. If we was any other agency, you'd have went back to the streets and probably died on the streets. You guys know which hospital he's going to? Your family or? It's case worker. But think just homelessness. There's a lot of people out here really sick. And it's hard enough to try to navigate the county system. They don't take the medication. Medical appointments is almost impossible to make if they don't have a case manager taking them to their appointments. So it's a, it's a mess. We have seen patients come in who are here in our ER every other day, who are hospitalized for weeks and months and countless times. And half 
are explicitly homeless and maybe half of the remaining we suspect are homeless but they're not really talking to us about their housing situation. They have a range of social issues like homelessness or substance use and then they have this piece where their social fabric has just fallen apart for them. So their family members are no longer in contact with them. Maybe their neighbors are no longer there and so they don't really have anybody to turn to to help them out. What ends up happening when we get somebody successfully connected to somebody like Anthony is we can then call Anthony when they're in the ER and we can problem solve together. Having somebody be like, I am in charge of helping this patient no matter what, no matter where, call me, is the best thing that's ever happened. Once you get the top 14 list, you never come off that list. I'm almost like a family. Still have Eddie Carter that needs to go to the doctor. Eddie's 65. He knows he's on the top 14. He knows he's been homeless, probably the longest person in Hollywood. He refused housing, came back to the streets, double amputee. That's top 14. This is his. This is where he plugs into his wheelchair at night. Told when he's care that he needed to go to the hospital. So we set it up for him to go to the hospital. He knew he was supposed to meet us right here this morning. He said he still wants to go to pick him up. He's not here. So he's hiding from us right now. I gotta go try to find him. Gonna go to Starbucks. He's like a ghost. Oh, you can't miss him. Can't miss it. How you doing, Snake? <laughs> Still not going? Did it get you wrong? No, it didn't get too long, Eddie. I got you that chair. That is the only thing you can do you would do. You know, I don't feel good when I push your house. Uh, I believe be that when I see it. Me, me too. Either way it goes, he's getting housed. Either way it goes. He doesn't know that though, but either way it goes, I'm housing him. I honestly feel that each individual on the top 14 should be housed and will be housed. It may take six months, it may take 16 months, it may take two years, but each individual on the top 14 will be housed. That's what I'm Los Angeles is the highest per capita homeless city in the United States. I do believe that ultimately it's less expensive for our society to house the homeless. Um, and so I think that continuing to grow our inventory of permanent supportive housing will uh, help us uh, certainly in the hospitals to have fewer expenses both of real illness that occurs when people are exposed to the elements, people who are assaulted because they can't protect themselves, um, as well as people who seek out the hospital as a way to get to shelter. You don't begin with someone who's chronically homeless by you know, saying, here's your apartment, right? Because you have to engage people. What's great about Anthony and case managers like him is that they meet people where they are. They begin the engagement process. They make people recognize that there is another choice, that there is a possibility of housing. So when you combine that kind of active, empathetic case management with real housing, a real exit from homelessness, you see amazing success. Never seen a homeless person that I've worked with just happily jump up, jump in a car, and say, "Let's go get housing." It doesn't happen that way. I met Willie Davis. He was in jail. I went to court. I talked to his probation officer at court. I talked to the judge at court, and they released him to my custody in the hopes of housing him. They probably didn't do what I did with Willie Davis. Willie Davis most likely would have died on the streets. 
helpful for Willie because he has his medication at his house. He called me this morning. He spent the night in his apartment. And I just needed him to get on his medication and see his doctor and slow down on that man. It's real good. It's a place to stay. You know, it's a nice little apartment. It's nice and quiet. It's about a thousand. You got a 30 day supply of medication. So we got to go back to the supply clinic, get you a follow up appointment. You got to start doing that. You got to do that. I don't know to take it. Yeah, I mean, you just take it every day. All right. See you later, buddy. Love you, buddy. All right. I wish it was um, a team where we can have uh, this many 40 people and hopefully this pilot program that we can have in those county wide and then be doing this in a small county and have a lot of people that want to do that. I gravitate to the people that are underserved more because my father left when I was six months old and I always wonder what happened to him. Hi. Oh, you did, this, this is my son. I'm glad to see you, man. I've been worried about you so long. Huh? I've been worried about you so long. Yeah, it's I know. This is just my wife. I know. I love, I love, I love. <laughs> I love you, man. You safe, promise? Mm -hmm. I got backup, boy. <laughs> I got backup. I got the army behind me. Yeah. You safe, man. All right. I know there's families out there that have to see their loved ones. Somebody needs to love them and take care of them until they find their way back to their families.